hello, and welcome to Indie Encounter. My name is Mark Wilson Jordan. The mission of our show is to give independent performers and artists access to as wide an audience as possible and to give you, our viewers, a window into their art, their artistic process, and why they have chosen their particular avenue to connect with the world. All art is about communication and connection. Today, we will be chatting with a familiar face, poetess and regular host of this show, Sandra Lorraine Coleman. Sandra, welcome to Indie Encounter. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to hearing you say those words and welcoming your guests, so I'm glad to be able to welcome you. Well, here thank today. you very much. I'm excited to be here, whether I'm sitting in that chair as a hostess or this chair as an artist. I'm just excited to be here. Great, because it's great to see you and great to have you here. Thank you very much. Um, I really enjoy being in an environment where I can express my creativity, whether it's as I said, the hostess or the artist, it's just a blessing to be able to share from any perspective and just be the best no matter which seat I'm sitting in or no matter what hat I'm wearing. Just be the best that I can be at whatever I'm doing. Great. And of course today you get to wear the poetess hat. Yes. So. One of my favorite hats. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been an interesting year for many of us. I'm hopeful that it's been a good year for you. Um, you were my first guest when we started the show way back when. Yes. And so, tell us about what you've been doing. Well, of course, my first priority is being a mom. Um, my daughter plays basketball uh -huh. in high school for Long Beach Poly, and today at 12 o'clock they left for Arizona. She's going to Phoenix, Arizona. They're playing in a tournament. Oh, cool. And I'm really excited for her. I'm excited for her because of the, all the opportunities that she will be able to have just from, you know, playing basketball and being on a team and the camaraderie of teammates. And, and even though her world is basketball and my world is poetry, you know, you just, you can't, um, by the benefits that it'll give her an experience as a human being, as a woman, as a person, you know, so. And speaking of my daughter, I actually have a poem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That I wrote. <laughs> I actually wrote it for her, um, and it's called Part of Me. And I'm not going to explain it, I'm just going to read it, and then you'll know why I call it Part of Me. <clears throat> Part of me can't wait till she graduates, complete with cap and gown, wings spread wide, ready to dive right into a waiting world that won't be as kind as I. Baby girl, you have dressed my mother dreams in reality. Part of me won't let go, holding hard as I can to her fast becoming woman hands, crying deep down inside every time I think of her leaving, grieving, Morning the day she will walk away and leave my arms feeling just a little too empty. Part of me has packed her bags with all those designer rags she absolutely had to have. Bought a one-way ticket to anywhere but here. But my deepest fear is her not really is her not really being equipped at all. Baby girl, you have elevated the true woman in me. And part of me is unsteady, nowhere near ready to see her as my equal. No longer my baby, but a beautiful young lady who don't need mommy no more because she's finally learning how to navigate life's road without a driver, or so she thinks. Part of me knows that the moment before she even goes is the very moment I will miss her. Mm part of me part of me I'm torn <laughs> right you want to get them ready to go out into the world and and be independent but right at the same time as a parent you you don't sort want to wanna yeah. keep them around you do you want your baby you do and and I'm having a really hard time because I and I look at her I watch her every day and I know I have to do it I know I have to let her go 
And so for me, I thank God I'm able to write that down and see it and read it and hear it and feel it. <laughs> and coach it, yourself on exactly, it. Exactly. <laughs> it helps me a little bit more, I think, um, than maybe the average parent. And, you know, being a parent is a crapshoot anyway. You don't know. You do the best you can. There's no book you can read. You know, even your parents can tell you stuff. But it might work for your kid. It might not. You know, right. each person is different. Each child is different. But I'm thankful for all the experience that I've had in my life to be able to do what I thought was the best that I could do. You know, if you if you do start out doing something and get to the end of it and say, well, I, I did the best I could, I did the best I knew how, then, I mean, who... Because you're there every day right. and involved in the process of right. her becoming a, a complete human being and an adult. Exactly. And exactly. as long as you make sure that you stay one page ahead of her in that book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But sometimes it's not easy. So yeah, I've had to sacrifice a lot, but I wouldn't I wouldn't trade my experience for the world. I wouldn't trade being an artist for the world, a creative person. Um, I haven't worked in corporate America for a long time because for me it stifles my creativity. I don't like people looking over my shoulder. Um I just like being able to be creative no matter what it is. You know, you give me something to do and let me figure out how to do it the best way and, and get it done. Right. Rather yeah. than having someone else set the terms of your participation. Exactly. Yeah. Because exactly. they set the agenda, they set right. the standard, they set right. the timetable. Exactly. And if you're a creative person, you may not work to that same clock, that right. same agenda, that same timetable. Right, and that has been very difficult for me, um, trying to find the balance, because then I do have a child that needs to eat and have clothes and participate in activities, and I'm a creative person and working a nine to five makes me really, really unhappy, you know? So I had to find a way to do it where I could still be creative and happy and still give her what she needed. Oh, so you have the answer. No, I don't. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I just did it my way. <laughs> you know, I worked part time so I could be there for her during the day. And like I said, I had to make sacrifices. There were things I couldn't do places I couldn't go but you know she always had a place to live she always had food you know always had clothes so and I poetry think, and poetry yes she even actually wrote poetry for a little while I had her own book and we I printed up a book for her and we uh, sold her book and the proceeds went to her college fund so anytime she made money from selling her book I would put it in her savings account, which was our college fund. I opened her up a, a, a savings account when she was born because I knew, I know me, and I knew that over the years I would have to, you know, put money aside for her because there's just was certain things that I wasn't going to be able to do for her, but that was not going to be one of them. Education was not going to be one of them. I was not going to sacrifice that. Right. Yeah, so... And now it's possible that uh, basketball might be paying the tuition piece. Yes, you might get a scholarship. Well, I'm not going to even say might. I'm not going to put might out in the universe. I'm going to say she will get a scholarship. So maybe we can stipend that money that I save for her, you know, so she for can... For her incidentals and, yeah. So she can Feel focus nice on thing. her education. Yeah, yes, you know, and like I said, I'm excited for her because the experience that she's gonna have with this. I mean, she's going to Arizona, you know. She, this summer she went to Atlanta, Oregon, San Diego, and Arizona. I mean, she was gone for like a whole month. It was like, wow, you know, maybe I should have played. <laughs> 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 it 
or concentrated more on that school work to lay the foundation for that. Hmm. Yes, that too. But uh, <laughs> it's not too late to go back to school, you know. Okay. And I'm I'm seriously considering um, going back to USC. Um, I want to take something like African American studies and and just make my uh, life experience more in tune with who I am, who my ancestors were. Um, I've taken African dance, so I've learned a lot about African culture. Now, I can't tell you um, which African tribe I'm descended from, but I just, I feel a connection with the music, the rhythm, the culture, just the whole vibe. Um, I really feel a connection with it, and so I've sought information and sought to learn like some of the culture because even if my ancestors didn't do that specific dance, they did something similar. Right. And so I feel comfortable with that. Um, life is a beautiful thing. Once you learn how to appreciate, how to move with it and not against and it. And not against it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. M move with it. You know, take your time. I'm not saying take all the time in the world and don't, you know, put, put things off just because you think you have time because tomorrow's not promised. But love yourself enough to want to see yourself succeed at whatever it is you do. And then make the effort at it. Exactly. Because if, if you just let life happen to you, these poems don't get written. No, they don't. No, they don't. And again, you have to see the poetry in everything you do. If you're an artist, a visual artist, you know, you take photographs, you have to see the picture in everything that's going on, whether it's a, a verbal picture, you know, somebody speaking about a picture or whether you're actually taking photographs. You have to be able to see the art, the poetry, the laughter, the love, the life in everything you do. And then let it inspire you? Yes. And there's a poem. Yes. So, how about the next poem? How about the next poem? <laughs> Okay, this one actually I wrote for <clears throat> my dearest friend, and she was actually a guest on, on Indian Encounter. Her name is Alice the Poet. Her name is Alice Nicholas. We call her Alice the Poet. <clears throat> the poem is called Sister Friend, and this is what I was going through when she was going through something. She was in the hospital, mm -hmm. but I didn't know yet. We couldn't be any closer than if we were birthed by the same womb. It's 1.29 a.m. She's in the hospital and heavy on my mind. When more than two messages go unanswered, I worry and wonder if she's all right. See, we talk most every day, share poetry, prose, ponder politics, and solve problems. Hers, mine, ours, for ours. We couldn't be any closer even if we'd been birthed by the same womb at the same time. We have similarities like telling our heart's most sacred secrets on pieces of sky, writing wrongs with words wise enough to walk on water, and we've taught our tears to swim so we don't drown when they decide to fall. We couldn't be any closer, it's like we are birthed by the same womb at the same time, joined at the soul. We dance with ancestors beyond the moon, collect sunshine in teacups we sweeten with full lip sips, help each other through harder times. We hurt, heal, then blend our black woman blues into happy hues and paint our life lessons on parchment for the world to see. Alice the Poet my sister friend. We couldn't be any closer than being born from one spirit, created in God's mind way before beginning and even longer after time. Mm. Impressive. Thank you very much. And she was, 
she was going through something and I kept trying to call her because we like I said in the poem we talk almost every day sometimes two or three times a day and I left her messages like a couple of days and I hadn't heard from her when I did she told me she was in the hospital and mm -hmm. I just you know and I kept calling because she was on my mind like really heavy and so I knew something I didn't know what but I knew something I'm like she hasn't called me back something's going on you know and I gotta find out what it is so she finally called me and let me know that she was in the hospital <clears throat> and she was having cardiac spasms. Her heart was um, going through like uh, when you have a Charlie horse. Mm -hmm. Not beating rhythmically. Right, right. And then yeah, contracting, contracting yeah. in a non rhythmic way. Yeah, and it was very painful for her. And so, you know, they kept her in the hospital, but it took them, I think, about a week before they actually found out what it was. And it's called cardiac ischemia. Well, since then, her condition has become reversible cardiac ischemia. Which is so, a good thing. Yes. So, and I've never heard reversible in front of a diagnosis. So I was, you know, we're excited about that. And, you know, I just keep praying for her healthy, happy, and, and she's like one of the most phenomenal poets that I know, and I am proud to call her sister friend. Well, I'm sure she was impressed when she heard your use of the language and using the language to tap into an emotion and express a feeling very deeply and, and be able to talk about it out loud. Right. Because many people feel deeply, mm -hmm. but they can't really put words on it. Right. And I think people get frustrated when they can't put words on what they're feeling or how they're feeling it. So with an assist from someone who right. is a, an expert with the language, you just go from there. Yes, yes, so, and yes, absolutely. And sometimes we overthink. Oh, I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're being creative and, you know, you're going through the process, a lot of people say, I wish I could write, I wish I could write. Well, don't try to write. Just what, when it comes in your head, you know, write it down. Just worry about fixing it later. Grammar, punctuation, you know, don't. You can't we don't, edit it till you write it. Exactly. And we don't think in grammar and punctuation. You know what I mean? We have to learn those things. <laughs> so, I mean, if you can just get it down, get it out, and then, you know, fix it later if it needs to be fixed. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't. Sometimes we overthink, overwork it, and we work it right out of its beauty. You don't want to work something out of its beauty. It's already beautiful. It has a life of its own. You have to, we have to learn, just like being a parent. Those poems are my babies. I know when it's time to let it go. And, and, and trust yourself to give it up. Yes, and yeah. let it stand on its own yeah. because it, it's its own life. Okay. And I have to let it breathe and do what it's supposed to do. So let another one breathe. All righty. <laughs> I'm excited. Cool. These these are my latest works, so I'm really I'm really enjoying sharing these. This piece is called I Wanna. I wanna understand everything you know, from shackled ankles to back doors, the back of a bus, from building pyramids to populating plantations. Teach me. I will be spiritual salve placed on scarred southern trees and walk barefoot in the soil where your soul was laid to rest. I want to see everywhere you've been, travel those dusty dirt roads, watch you being bought and sold, sail on ship that stripped you of all that was home. Guide me. I will breathe life into your dreams, dance till my feet have memorized every twist and turn and your truth is resurrected. I want to feel everything you felt, like ancient skin sweetly seasoned by the sun, bathing with nothing but stars and moonlight, 
wandering the wilderness, working waste till it's wealth, and warriors wiggling way down in my womb. Free me. I will shout your names one by one from the highest hilltops. Bless your wounds with holy water squeezed from God's crying eyes, because in his sorrow we shall all be healed. I want to say everything except goodbye. Slice some more sweet potato pie. Sip sacred tea and dine on your divine wisdom. Hold me, keep me, till sleep slides, my eyes closed. I wanna. Yes, I wanna. I wanna learn, I wanna know, I wanna feel, I wanna understand. I wanna get connected. Yes, most definitely. And, and I, I definitely heard something in there about our coming to America mm -hmm. because we as black people didn't come here of our own choosing. No, we did not. But now that we're here, right. can't get rid of us. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But we have to try to in some way get connected right. uh, with how we got here. Well, I've been told by, you know, people from actually from Africa because I've taken uh, master dance classes that it's not so, we've, it's been what, 465, 66, seven years since slavery or something like that, almost 500 years. Um, we need to remember it's already there in our DNA. We just need to help it come to the surface. So we are still connected, but our connection, slavery damaged it, of course. Mm -hmm. But if we can only remember like um, walking barefoot in the dirt, you know, our connection to the earth, that's why they didn't wear shoes when they danced in Africa because that was their way of being close and connected to, to the earth. And always in dance, they raised their hands to the sky where they're always giving praise, you know. So there's a lot of things that we do that we don't even realize we do that we're still connected. It's just been a little damaged. So we just need to recall. You know, and need to be conscious and conscious. open to that. And, yes. And, right. and let our DNA do what it's supposed to do and smack us upside the head and say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a wonderful, wonderful life. I won't say it was easy. You know, just like the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, that they show around this time of year, Christmas time. What would the world be like if I weren't in it? I don't want to know. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I've experienced the things I've experienced. I'm glad I'm sitting in this seat right now and sharing, you know, with people just a little bit, you know, giving them a little glimpse of your my experience. World. Yes. Yes, and that's all it, that's all poetry is. You know, that's my music. That's my painting. It's good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to encourage you to continue to do it. Absolutely. Do you have one more that you could share with us? Yes, I do. I have one more. And right. this one is called At Some Point. And I wrote this for particularly with um, black men in mind. Shh, quiet. A real brother is speaking, filling the air with vibrations that resonate from the hills of heaven. His cries are calls that crumble walls. Stretch his voice across time, giving your mind a moment to adjust. He has washed melodies with words of wisdom and dried them with diligence. At some point, you will listen. Shh, quiet. A Messiah's message is moving, darting through darkness, dismembering distance between us, breaking down barriers built to deny access to places we don't really need to be. He kicked up dust, started revolutions in your honor, strapped struggle to his back and carried her all the way to death's door. 
at some point you will remember. Shh, quiet. A black man is breathing, resuscitating broken rhythms because he believes your rights are worth saving. A shaman slaving over salvation, he is the sign you seek, then destroy. And you want to worship his works after he's gone. By the way, that burning bush was his soul on fire. At some point, you will learn. Shh, quiet. A lunatic is raving, waging war within himself. His rumblings are what makes earth quake. Somewhere in his insanity, he's making sense. Maybe he ain't so crazy after all. And at some point, you will regurgitate his ripples. Hmm. Very nice. Thank you. And we need to listen. And we need to listen, but we have to get quiet to do it. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes it doesn't matter who's speaking there's something that they're saying that you need to hear or they wouldn't be saying it. Right. It might not be the whole thing, it could be just a piece of it, but if you're talking, you're gonna miss the piece that's meant for you. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> we're gonna leave it there. Okay. Sandra, thank you for coming to Indy Encounter today. It was great to see you. It was great to hear your poetry. Thank you, it's great to be here and I so enjoyed it. And Bless you for doing this. Thank you. This has been Indie Encounter, a journey into the world of the independent creators of art and artistic communication. I want to thank today's guest, Sandra Lorraine Coleman, for sharing her vision and poetry with us. I want to, if you want to find out more about Sandra, check her out on the web by entering her name into your internet browser. Her email is blessed r, the letter r, we one at gmail.com. Check out our website here at Pasadena Community Network.com and select the Arroyo channel. You may also check out one the number four mark.com for additional contact information. Thanks to our director, Lilia Fernandez Gaspar, and our crew for making the show possible. Thanks to all of you for watching. We hope to see you here again when we embark on another in the encounter.